our first speaker today is Joanna Gibbons from uh, London. Uh, she's a landscape architect with a uh, long term experience, already more than 20 years as her own uh, company in London. And she will be uh, talking about a project which she's involved in already for four years, this Plains Park, a redesign of uh, a large scale area in uh, London, uh, of which she is one of the key consultants. Um, but there's a whole series of people involved with lots of other consultants who are uh, experts in other areas. So it's a very complex uh, project. Um, and she will talk about that project, of course, in the broader context of her other experience as well with her other work. Uh, and, but with Crystal Palace Park, what's very interesting uh, for us as a place that we for Uncommon Ground is that this combination of a large scale planning and design project where a lot of stakeholders, people, expertise, but the general public is involved in as well. So there's a series of consultations with people where there's communication on a very intimate uh, scale. Uh, but there's also, of course, a strategy and uh, there's time and, and uh, budget, lots of things to, um, to care about. And you have to navigate this. So this is very much a case um, of skill and intimacy, actually. And uh, Joanna is Sorry, should I kneel down? <laughs> uh, and Joanna has lots of experiences in this environment, so we're very happy to welcome you and to hear about your work. It's great to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, one of our projects, we're a small company, um, but um, <clears throat> we have. Uh, very privileged to be working in a sense on very large projects and um, this does allow us to manoeuvre rather more quickly and swiftly um, than the large tankers that are the big professional outfits and, and that's quite a nice feeling, it's quite a, quite a nice energetic feeling. So I just want to uh, orientate you. Um, that's Crystal Palace. Yes, it's working. multidisciplinary team working for the London Development Agency, which is the arm of the Mayor's office, which actually puts work into the ground. Um, and it's a magnificent but dilapidated um, park, 80 hectares, which has been allowed to deteriorate since the palace burnt down in 1935. The park's importance is as much vested in what no longer exists is history, archaeology and memory, as in the surviving fragments of a fine 19th century park designed 150 years ago by Sir Joseph Paxton, probably the most important park designer of the Victorian era. The park is intrinsically linked to the Great Exhibition of 1851 and the establishment of the National Museums in London. Back then, it was a project of unparalleled ambition, scale and innovation with the largest glass and iron structure in the world and a water system which uh, rivaled Versailles, where Paxton intended to instruct um, the people who visited the park. He intended to raise and elevate their horizons and to kindle their desire for knowledge. He was a didactic, this was a very didactic uh, design philosophy and this is really where the scene is very different today. To us, the project has never been um, 
it was very important that it never was a distant strategic design exercise. This is just this shows you Crystal Palace's the scale of it, you know, just out of interest um, compared to other parks in London. Um, so it's a, it's a significant size. Um, the project. Um, the project in Paxton's day was almost imposed on the people. It was called the People's Park, but they didn't have any discussion in it. It was, it was given to them. Um, but our, our process today, and where the success of the master plan to a large degree is actually reliant now on the cultivation of intimate relationships with individual stakeholders. And this is one of uh, this is a, a an outreach project um, where a photographer uh, Claire uh, Waffle took photographs of local residents. The aerial is taken. This aerial is of the park, and it's um, it's interesting because our concern is from that individual you saw in the last slide back to this group of people you see in the athletic stadium. That's forty thousand. Um, an audience at the Coldplay concert, um, and you can see the physical context of the park. And this diagram um, illustrates the, the context in terms of complexities of local interest and governance, uh, as the park is located on the boundary of five boroughs. Um, on top of that, this is a diagram which illustrates in outline, actually it's far more complex since we drew this, um, the size of the design team and the client body behind the project. But despite this scale and complexity on many levels, connecting with the individual has been a priority. Without that level of intimacy, the design of this huge and significant park would lack richness and relevance and probably would stall at the planning application stage due to a fundamental lack of support. So, it is a large park, and following the strands of information and accepting that there will always be, and should be, loose ends is important to keep the dialogue open, to keep it fresh and revealing. Uh, this drawing, for instance, illustrates physical, social, and material um, potential, and the possible spatial definition that results out of, out of knitting all of that together. However, we're constantly exploring different ways uh, and methods of communication, um, layering the information to make the process accessible, and to untangle issues and clarify rather than confuse. This helps us to focus discussions with the huge range of, um, of interest groups we have on this project, which are diverse and demanding. And we're working with these groups within quite tight time scales. Um, and these groups range from athletes, elite athletes and the audiences they draw, um, to the, com the needs of the community groups um, and the provision for individual spiritual replenishment that a part of this scale and stature um, should, should offer. Um, and this information we bring together and visualize to help progress ideas and stimulate discussion. So we use these not as final presentations but as a way um, to challenge, you could say, um, people's perception of what's possible and to raise aspiration. Um, I wanted to just talk about one example where scale and intimacy relate at Crystal Palace um, and how consultation, consultation on the ecology of the park was unlocked, in this instance with a, with a bacon sandwich. Um, the consultation process has been running for about four years to date and we're still constantly battling with the conspiracy theory, uh, particularly with the local wildlife group, as there's an inherent mistrust of large organizations such as our client, the LDA, with issues um, being, uh, with, with tree issues in particular, being uh, very contentious and, and, and emotive.